In Mammoth Lakes, California, the bears are back in town. Boy, you're huge. They're not only huge, they're hungry. He's eating a ton of grass. With tourists flooding into the area as fast as the bears. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's some bears there. Collisions are imminent. It's up to one man to keep bears and people safe from each other. Go, man, go. There's a golfer right there. Steve Searles. One on one. Nobody knows the bears like he does. OK. Get out of here. This season, a massive bear challenges Steve. Knock it off. Enough of that. Another leaves him shaken to the core. I got blood on my glasses. And for the first time, one wrong move puts Steve in a place he's never been. No! Black bears are some of the most imposing creatures on the planet. They can tear the door off your car and not even break a sweat. A big male can weigh 600 pounds and still outrun the fastest man on Earth. He could sprint probably at 25 to 30 miles per hour. They can scale trees, swim great distances, and sniff out food three miles away. Black bears can smell through a cooler that's locked inside of a car that's parked inside of a garage. In Mammoth Lakes, it's easy for bears to find food. There's fish and lush vegetation. It's a wild bear paradise, with one exception. They must share the space with more than a million tourists a year. The potential for conflict is great. It's Steve Searle's job to keep things in check. Get out of here! You bad bear, get! So as far as the job goes, I'm a really lucky guy, and I have a unique job. But it does, it's just, you know, it's the yin and yang of life. And um, I have to be the judge, the jury, and sometimes the executioner. Don't like the third one. And so it's best to do a lot more of the other two. The more proactive I am rather than reactive, uh, the better results we get. So I work a lot of hours, and I'm out here every day. Steve Searles came into the picture as a hunter originally who knew how to track. And when we began to have wildlife issues, the chief of police enlisted Steve's assistance to help control the wildlife. Go on. You know better than this. And as a self-taught professional, he has become very well educated in our local bears' behaviors and how to Come condition on. them and use techniques in controlling Go their on. aggression to help them realize that human beings probably are not the best people to be around. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Steve's official title is Wildlife Patrol Officer, but he's better known as the Bear Whisperer. For probably the last 15 years, I have um, tried to vocalize with bears. I've been too embarrassed to share that. I do it privately, and some bears, uh, when they see me coming, they will start vocalizing. Other bears are a lot quieter. Um, just through trial and error, I just um, tried different techniques uh, to make my job easier. Oh, I hear ya. I would describe Steve as a completely unique personality. He's uh, intense at the same time as he can be fairly laid back. All right, you can come over here. He's dedicated his life to hanging out with the bears and getting to know them and trying to understand them. Is that a brown bear? It's, it's a black, black bear. So how old do you think that cub is? It is. is this, this year? It was born in February. Over the past 15 years, Steve has developed an unprecedented program to keep people and bears apart. It begins with two rules for the bears. The first, be respectful of people. You go on. Bears that aren't afraid of people, it'll get them killed. And so, um, you know, running bears off is a part of my job. Go on. It'll just make them live longer. Rule number two, don't scare people. Knock it off. 
We know statistically that people are rarely, if ever, hurt or um, killed by a bear. 100,000 bears have been killed by people. There's just no denying the numbers that the bear's gonna end up on the short end of the stick every time. What are you doing? Get out of there. Get out. I have this psychological hand on them, and even though I, I weigh nothing in comparison, they believe I'm the biggest, baddest bear in town. But sometimes the bears are willing to battle Steve for dominance. Enough. Shame on you. A bear's gonna huff at me, and he's in trouble with me. I'm gonna huff right back. I don't back down. And when necessary, Steve uses a variety of non-lethal techniques to teach the bears right from wrong. Get out of here. Go on, get. Get out of here. Get. I love bears, but um, it's cruel to be kind. They need to learn that people are mean. They'll spray them, they'll run them over with their cars, they'll kill them, they'll shoot them, they'll entrap them. And so I'd rather be mean to them professionally than have them die. Steve is one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He's trained all of our officers on, on his techniques and strategies on dealing with bears, and we work very well hand in hand with him. Hopefully he's gonna move out of there slowly and I'm gonna back you up with non-lethal. But most of the time, Steve works alone. Get in there, go on. You stay in there until it's dark. Go on now, get in there. Go on in there. Go on. For people that see me working with bears or think that I'm nutty or crazy or it's a dangerous situation, when I'm at your home or your city, that's how I feel too. I'm scared of the cities. Um, my safest place I could be is with the bears. But a bear is still a wild animal and anything is possible. Wildlife 1, 24 15. Go for Wildlife 1, 15. Got a report of a bear over on Pine Road. Copy that, I'm in the area. Uh, the neighbors noticed a, a large bear building a den uh, underneath this driveway, and um, the people that were renting the home uh, called me to uh, come and take a look. Steve films as many bears as he can to identify, study, and better manage them. is dead for the last five months. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm. Just taking a look. Mm. Boy, you're huge. This is the largest bear Steve has ever seen. It's springtime. You can't stand her here anymore. We had a long, successful winter. Mm. Sometimes I'm called for inappropriate uh, den sites. If it's too close to children or the school, we need to move the bear along and let him know that it's just not a good place for him. All right. Black bears are solitary animals. If their dens are exposed, they usually abandon them. All right. You're feeling kind of anxious. But this enormous bear is agitated. You're OK. And even though there's an opening on the opposite side, he doesn't make a move to leave. To make sure the bear isn't sick or injured, Steve needs to get a better look. My eyes are limited compared to his, and so uh, I always carry a flashlight to try to uh, light bears up. On camera, I'll catch details that I can't catch in the moment. All right. Seem to offend the bear. All right. All right. The bear's threatening move is known as a bluff charge. Oh, easy. Bear's bluff charging is something that should be respected, but try to understand that it's just their way of letting a human being know, can All you right. please back up and give me some space? All right. OK, OK. All right, all right. If you aren't frightened when a bear bluff charges, you're dead or drunk. It's lonely to anybody. I might have a high tolerance for bears. It doesn't mean I'm stupid. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. He was uh, mooing and clapping and, and um, huffing. Okay, okay. He's uh, saying, I'd really like you to give me some room. I've been under here for five months without anyone bothering me. Now you're in my face. You have that silly flashlight. And um, would you back off and, and let me sleep? I guess I wasn't listening as well as I should. 
Steve wants to move the bear out and on his way, but it's a delicate situation. I thought he would take the other way out. Go back. I'm not hurting you. Knock it off. No! No! Stop it! Knock it off! No! Go on! You stop it! You bad bear! Don't see that every day. Oh my gosh. That's a no bear. Holy In the aftermath, you could see that the bear couldn't fit out the other exit of the den. I thought he could. You gotta give bears their room. Uh, when he came out, he had me uh, hemmed in in the corner right here. I uh, hear my uh, vocal commands telling him to no, no, back up, hands above my head, yelling at him. And uh, he responded and moved on down the hill. I learn every day things that I don't know, the bear will teach me. And so um, this was a classic example of me yeah. learning. And uh, the bear was giving me the education. Wow. When Steve returns the next day, he finds Max back under the house. We brought a police officer over. He shot rounds from up above us. Well, I brought the bear out from the other way, and we plugged him in the ass right here. All right, all right. When it comes to personality or habits, every bear and mammoth is different. Steve makes it his business to know where they are and what they're up to. Part of my job every day is to do like a paper route. And uh, during that paper route, uh, some of those man-made den sites or daybed sites are on my list and I check them every day. You're OK. I'm just going to take your picture. The daily rounds help Steve keep track of the bears in town. For more than a decade, he's been studying and documenting them. Year after year, many of the same bears return. There he is, that's Ace. Hello. Including Ace, a bear Steve spent lots of time teaching how to get along. This bear was going into homes and uh, became an issue. He's doing great. He hasn't been responsible for a single 911 call all last year and all so far this year. Little Red, who's not so little anymore. Whoa. Ugly Bear, who keeps himself out of trouble. The old bear half knows. Oh, you look good. You look good, pal. And one of Steve's most stubborn bears. Hello. Is that you, one of you? The bears are always in the shadows, and as much time as I spend with them, it's still hard to determine one from the other under the darkness or the canopy of the forest, it's sometimes hard for my eyes to adjust and see. Now I can see clearly. It is you. It's one ear. You're looking a little tore up, but not too bad. Steve gives each of the older bears names. Bears are only named for their physical characteristics. I don't name them Bob or Joe or Susie. I name them uh, uh, one ear or half nose or blacky, browny, blondy. Uh, names that I can uh, help remember my uh, bears I'm working with this year. One ear, I've known them for, geez, maybe over 10 years. He knows how to get along with people and how to stay out of trouble. But there was a time when Steve and One Ear were at odds. Hey, One Ear, stop Get it. down there. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. No, One Ear. Get back. Whoa. Go back now. After countless run-ins, the old bear has finally learned to play by Steve's rules. Do the bears remember who I am? Probably better than I remember them. They have wonderful memories. Black bears are extremely smart. They're known for their ability to communicate, cooperate, and grasp simple concepts. What a nice bear. He continues to just move on out of our way and uh, give us 
uh, our space where it should be the other way. And this is one of the few bears that's still alive that I started the original program with. You don't get this old by being stupid, and so he's a very intelligent bear. Hello. One of the most important parts of Steve's job is keeping the bears away from crowds, especially during the height of the tourist season. I'm going to come up there and, and uh, bring up an officer in just a little bit. A large cinnamon-colored bear has been spotted inside a culvert, too close to a busy arts festival. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's a bear there. They have concerns about it staying the day here and likely going to ask the bear to leave. I would just be a bear near the art festival, and I might use a unit over here for a few minutes. With so many people all around, Steve calls for backup. The lady who's running the event, she's concerned with the bear sleeping under the road and wants it removed. The uh, exit of the culvert is that concrete buttress Where right there. Where does it come out? Over here. Right there uh, on the other side of the street, and the bear is sleeping about 30 feet in, and it is, um, that concrete spillway is where the bear is going to predictably come out. The least offensive thing I think I could do to the bear to drive him out is touch off two flash bangs. It's just a, a, a very simple device. Um, flare gun is what it basically is for moving on wildlife. It's all uh, just a helpful, non-lethal tool. Just uh, startles the bear, lets him know that he needs to move on. The officer loads his rifle with non-lethal rounds in case the bear runs into the crowd instead of away from it. Steve went to one side of the culvert, and I went to the other side of the culvert and stood up on the roadway so where I can see the bear actually exit. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm going to torch off two. They won't touch him. Uh, the percussion is going to drive him out. Go on now. You got to go. Steve shot the flashbang, the bear went through the culvert, out towards the golf course, and I was in position to fire a less lethal round and scare the bear if the bear was to come back towards the roadway. He's right there, bro. Go on now, get in there. Get in there now. Go on, get in there. There he goes. There he goes. So you leave it to the professional. Shut up. <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks for your help, Dan. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Bear went the right direction, didn't bother the people, knew he had to leave, and uh, we're on to the next call. Mammoth Lakes is tucked into the forest and surrounded by green belts. It gives the black bears plenty of room to den. Here in the forest under the canopy, the bears come to stage or put in bear beds. Um, these are great examples of that. Um, you could see that it's the, a rotted, deteriorated log. And during the heat of the day, um, this material stays cooler than uh, the normal dirt or the duff. I'm about 6'4 barefoot and 180 pounds. And just to give you some kind of uh, scale for the size of the bed, uh, when I walk up on them, you know, they're oftentimes asleep or have their pads up in the air if they want to be cooling. Um, they're crimped over and, you know, more in a huddled fetal position if they want to um, keep body heat. They are diggers by profession. Um, they build them just about the size of their body. We can see two front pad prints where the bear was probably laying on his tummy. Um, it was a little bit uh, rocky for him or had too many pine cones in it, and so he didn't use it for long. But we can see where a bear was trying the bed out, kind of like the fairy tale. You know, there's flowers, water, trees, um, everything you need to uh, be happy as a black bear. But they also like their privacy. They often seek out hidden spaces. Model 1, Wallace 197. <laughs> and sometimes they end up where they shouldn't. That's when Steve has to respond. We're in a really neat part of town. Um, a lot of these homes aren't lived in. At this one, a bear has moved in beneath the hot tub. Hey, big guy. Hello. It's cold out, huh? 
it's, it's nice and warm under there. He's sleeping under there today. But there's a problem. The bear's noises have frightened one of the grounds workers. Mm. You're OK. Mm. Hi, pal. Gonna be a four-year-old, maybe a little bit older male. He's just kicking it. The first thing Steve wants to do is identify the bear. He has no chest markings, no breastplate. He has no uh, torn ears, no scars. Not that big a bear, but not too small either. Uh, but he hasn't garnered a name, but what a lovely bear. I think that bears are like people. Some of them, some of them are more standoffish, some are more easygoing. It's a good trait to have as a bear. To be very docile and afraid of people, that's a good trait too. A bear is not a bear is a bear. Uh, they uh, come in all different varieties of um, their attitudes towards people and humans. But this is still a wild animal, and the bear is not allowed to stay under the porch after scaring someone. Those are the rules. You got to come out. You can't stay here anymore. You scared the jacuzzi guy. Come on. Go back in the woods. Let's go. Out. OK. After failing to drive the bear out with noise, Steve resorts to pepper spray. <coughs> oh. This form of non-lethal assaults the bear's senses. But it completely wears off within eight to 10 minutes. The only lasting effect is the memory, which can save the bear later from getting into another dangerous situation with people. Come on, out. Get out. All right, all right, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. You're all right. It's just showing submission by being in the tree. I, I don't have a single documented case of him doing anything wrong in town. And he was just uh, sleeping in the wrong spot, that's all. And so uh, what's done is done. I don't think he holds any hard feelings. I don't hold any hard feelings. And he'll go about his day, and I'll go about mine. That kind of live and let live attitude is something Steve tries to cultivate with the bears as long as they stay out of trouble. He loves just spending time with the bears. They calm him down. He's, he's got, Steve's got a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, when he's frustrated or upset about something, he'll, he'll just take off and, you know, he'll go and be, be with the bear. He's picked up a few, few traits. <laughs> one one, wildlife one. Wildlife one, one one. Can you show me 10 eight? Steve's known some of the older bears more than a decade and has become friendly with a few of them. Hey, buddy. What are you doing over there? I love you, sincere old bear. One of Steve's longtime favorites is named Half Nose. He has been scra uh, scrapping all of his life. And so like many of the old bears, he carries several scars from uh, that. Poor nose is bit right off. And he was in a fight with a bear named Arthur, and uh, Arthur bit the end of his nose off. And so he just has half of a nose, and thus the name Half Nose. What? Did I surprise you? Me and this bear go way, way back. I've been with this bear hundreds of hours, and so we've had good times and bad times together, but it just thrills me uh, that we're here with this bear right now. Hello. All right. All right. A black bear can live into its 20s. A big part of Steve's job is to make sure the bears in town are OK. It looks like this old bear is not in good health. Steve uses a special camera to get a closer look. The eye is weeping pretty bad, but now that I can see his teeth, he's got no teeth left. I'm not going to put this bear down, but that is a messed up deal right there. All right, I hear you. 
I didn't know his teeth were that bad. They're just nubs. He has the uh, both lower racks, but they're just like quarter inch nubs. And the front two canines, one is snapped off and black and infected. I could see why you're moaning, big guy. This guy would be, you know, comparable to a 90 year old man. He's just about out of tools. Yeah. So their teeth are very similar to humans, and their their feet, depending on their feeding patterns and what they've been eating, their teeth can actually rot out, and that will limit their ability to obtain the nutrients and the resources that they need to continue their life. And they'll essentially die of starvation on their own accord. I hate to say it or predict any bad for him, but he's just about done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I live in paradise. I work with uh, amazing, amazing animals. But, um, you know, if you're gonna work with wild animals, uh, they do die. And uh, it just breaks my heart, puts a lump in my throat. Okay. Hmm. All right. Steve Searles is devoted to protecting black bears, but he can't save all of them. In Mammoth, the bear's single biggest threat is traffic. I'm sorry to say that the, the accidents that we've responded to and seen this year is, is more than I've ever seen. Bears often misjudge how fast a car is going. With lots of tourist traffic and a major highway nearby, collisions are inevitable. I responded to a call from dispatch for a bear that had been hit on our highway coming into town. Steve doesn't know what shape the bear's in, so out of respect for the animal, he looks for it alone, bringing only his camera to document whatever may happen. I found the bear. All right. All right, pal. Steve's seen this bear before. It's a burly male he spotted for the first time a few months back. Wow, look at that guy's huge. Steve spent time over the winter studying the bear. You're OK. You're all right. Hey, mister. Hey, guy. When I respond to a call for an injured bear that I don't know, it's difficult. When it's one that I've spent a lot of time studying, it makes it extra hard. Hey, buddy. Hey, mister. Uh, the bear started pulling himself up the tree because he couldn't push with his rear legs. He was uh, clenching onto the branches with his teeth so that he could reposition his front paws and pull up that huge body weight. Are you all busted up? Are you all busted up? To see him pull himself up with his teeth, it broke my heart. Oh, buddy. Oh, mister. He splayed out on the branches and was in a, a lot of pain. Three of his legs were gripping into the branches, and the right rear was just hanging and dangling in the air. Steve has to make a difficult decision. The bear is in excruciating pain and his injuries are substantial. It's part of my job to put the motions aside and act responsibly for the best of the animal and do the right thing. I knew this bear had to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We're 
working with wildlife um, has the good days and has the bad days. I got blood on my glasses. That's a bad day. I was really distraught that day and felt bad about putting my buddy down. <sighs> then I went and got gloves, got up there and unwrapped them. I choose to put them back on the land. Putting a magnificent animal in the landfill, it, it just seems so disrespectful. Ending an injured bear's life is an agonizing part of Steve's job. It brings out a side of him few ever see. He sends the bear off in the tradition of the local Paiute Shoshone tribe who revere the bears. The Native Americans taught me to use tools, whether it's the tobacco or the smudge or a prayer or a song. All that shows the respect I have for the bear and, and try to help them on a little bit. Through these small offerings, it helps to hopefully soothe his pain as well as mine. Not everyone considers a bear's death a tragedy. Because of their immense size, adult males are prized by hunters as trophy kills. How long ago was there somebody with a gun? Hunting is legal in California, but not in the town of Mammoth Lakes. So when Steve gets a report of a bear that's possibly been shot, he responds quickly. The man says that there was a guy with a gun 20 minutes ago, and then uh, his kids say that there's a bear that was twitching around and laying down in the backyard. If there's anybody in the area with a gun, uh, that will be a problem. So we're just gonna run up here about a block away We'll see if we can help out a little bit. Based on where we are in the neighborhood, it's gonna be likely Big Red or Little Red. I can't hardly tell them apart anymore, but this is their area. Don't making too much attention. Hey, good, how are you? Steve tries to find the bear without drawing a crowd. He heads to the house where the bear was last seen and finds it under a porch. He doesn't seem to be struggling. I can see that the bear's obviously alive, and so that's a good thing. It turns out someone overreacted. The bear is just asleep. It's a six and a half foot, seven foot bear. Um, I can't see exactly who it is. He's got his head covered, um, but uh, he doesn't seem to be any uh, duress at all. So we'll just uh, keep observing him. He's a big, big bear and sleeping soundly. We'll probably let him be here until this evening where he can move out safely. It's midday, so a lot of dogs, kids, people around. You just can't have this bear, you know, walking around right now. Um, it would be problematic, to say the least. I know. I know. We don't mean you no harm. Yeah, I think I woke him up. Are you all right? You 
look okay. All right. You're a Popeye. You're a Popeye. Okay. Okay. The bear turns out to be Little Red, one of Steve's study bears who typically stays out of trouble. All right. We are kind of in the middle of two busy streets, and so we don't want to move this bear right now. To make sure Little Red doesn't end up in trouble, Steve keeps a close watch, but the bear doesn't like the attention. He's got his front shoulders down. The bear's body language signals his level of anxiety. Little Red feels threatened. All right. Steve tries to calm the bear by talking to it. I know, I know. Okay, I'll back off if you do. If we we're out in the forest, we would have backed off immediately. I own the pavement, he owns the forest, and that's the deal we have. And um, he was trying to challenge me, basically, you know, near my home. And uh, that just won't go square with me. It's a tricky situation. At any time, Little Red could overwhelm Steve and win the battle for dominance. Black bears are strong. They're immensely strong, stronger than a human by far. And it's real easy for a black bear to overcome a human. All right, all right. Oh. No, 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 no. We already talked about that. You stay right there and get some sleep, all right? With male bears, it's often a battle of wills. For Steve to maintain absolute authority, it's imperative that he gets the bears to back down every time. We're not in the middle of the forest. We're in a residential area. All of his senses know that. All of my senses know that. It's just bad bear management to let bears bluff people. It starts with me. It'll go to the tourist locals. And um, I run this town, not him. He's more than welcome to live here, but he can't bluff people off. There you go. There you go. Come on, outside. Get out of there. Earlier, Steve evicted a bear from under a house with a jacuzzi. Now, he's been called back to the same location. Well, this bear don't mean any harm, but he's found just a great spot to hang out. And he'll remember me running him off last time. And so uh, we're just going to give him a little nudge. and reinforce the message that he can't be out here, be under here. Come on. You remember. Come on. Ow. Poor guy thinks he's in paradise, and I got to let him know he's not. Come on. Ow. He didn't like that pepper spray last time. Come on. Let's go. Ow. Come on. Get out of there. But when Steve finally sees the bear, he makes a surprising discovery. Oh, hi. Well, it's not a nice bear. I thought it was the same bear as last time, but it's not. You don't want out. Pepper spray was so effective the last time, Steve decides to use it again. All right, dude. You got to come up. Here we go. There he goes. Look at that big cinnamon. Wow. All right, all right. Yeah, it was the big cinnamon, and it wasn't nice bear. As much as I know about bears, I uh, mistake them sometimes, too. To make sure the large bear is staying out of trouble, Steve follows him into the forest. This place is mine and not his, and he just has to know that, and now he does. No harm, no foul. All right. Look at the steam coming out of him. I thought he could poach a spot here. I think he's kind of annoyed with me. The bear instinctively trees himself, but he's put on a lot of weight, which signals something else to Steve. The season is coming to an end. Boy, look at his big tummy. Oh, you're bigger than a house, dude. He looks like a, a Wookiee or something. Look, he's too fat. 
Can you imagine the pressure on his toes right now? He's a seven foot bear with a big old gut. And I would guess that he is over 400 pounds right now. He could probably do it a little bit faster, but he's really at weight right now. He'll probably hunker down up there until uh, nightfall tonight. What a beauty. The bear is securely treed. Hopefully, he's learned the same lesson that Nice Bear did and won't be back. Nice Bear hasn't been under there in a month. And so that's a success. And now this bear knows it's uh, off limits. We'll let him be as long as he stays in the forest and not under somebody's house. To keep the enormous animals at a safe distance from people, Steve often depends on his ability to think like the bears. When he hears of a sizable bear inside a culvert where it doesn't belong, he knows exactly how to handle it. There's a lot of kids that come home from school and um, they tease the bear that's in there and. And so I, I just don't want them there. And so I'm going to go take care of this real quick. There's a green belt that's adjacent to the property and uh, make it super easy to um, have the bear go off into the forest. Now, this is one of the larger culverts. Uh, they're just storm drains, really. This one's so tall that he can stand up in there and uh, you know get out really quickly and get in quickly. It's not the first time Steve has had to forcibly eject a bear from this culvert. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living there for a couple weeks now, and the kids check the culvert every time they come home from school, try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. But this time, there are no bystanders. It's only Steve and the bear. Uh, where the bears are and what their habits are, I try to keep that secret. The police are out doing police work. I get to uh, move that bear along. And so um, the more that I can keep the bear's privacy and my privacy, it's just the better it is. I'm going to launch just a, a green meanie. Uh, that's what I used last time. When deployed, the non-lethal green meanie flies erratically and makes a loud whistling noise that will scare the bear but not hurt it. It doesn't work. The culvert is the length of a football field, and Steve can't get a good angle on his shot, so the green meanie barely makes a sound. He tries again. The full effect of the noise is lost inside the long, cavernous culvert. But still, the bear knows something is not right, and instead of leaving, he feels safer hidden inside. But it's getting late, and the kids will be home from school shortly. So this bear has to move now. Come on, out. Come on. Working with the aluminum bat is just kind of uh, my calling card. The bears are used to it. I've done it for Come probably on. 15 out. years, and so I've always used that same bat. And Come I think on. the bears have you know, become accustomed to it. When they hear that bat bang, and they know it's time to go. Finally, it works. Get out. Out. Go in the woods. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of there. Go on. You bad bear. Go on. But when Steve looks inside the tube, he makes a shocking discovery. A second bear. Oh, hi. You got to come out. Once again, Steve finds himself in an unpredictable situation. Lo and behold, there wasn't one bear, there was two. To have two bears bed together is really quite odd. He deploys a cherry bomb. The non-lethal explosion should be enough to persuade the second bear to seek safer ground. Last couple of years, we've seen the bears teaming up more. And uh, I don't understand it all yet, but uh, we'll keep studying it and learning from them. But uh, the, the buddy bears seem to be in there uh, coexisting just as well as we do. It's just another twist in what has made this the strangest year Steve has ever seen. This bear has left the area and into the forest. I'm 1098, 10 available. 
Everything I know about bears, they taught me. I try to bounce that back and teach them. I'm not the nicest guy in the world. I uh, pretty much run alone. I work alone. I am kind of a solo guy. The bears were kind of solo, and so it really works out for both of us. As the season comes to a close, Steve spends some much needed quiet time with his bears. Hey, big fella. I know. You're all right. Yeah, this bear has certainly made weight. He is um, looking very fit. We're glad to see him. These bears won't be in town much longer. They'll go up to altitude where they make their dens, and they'll be out of town for another six months. It's just a real magical time of year for me that, you know, I can see them up close and personal before they go into the long den. It's a bittersweet time. Steve can never be sure which bears will return the following spring, but in his own way, he sends them off. Boy, would I love to share with everybody what it's like to sit this close with a bear. Yeah, I don't know how to put it into words, but... I'll miss him, I will. You help me a lot more than I help you. You have a good night.